Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Much like the Nightmare Zone, one cannot claim to be an old-school RuneScape YouTuber without making a bank rebuild video. So if you recently got hacked or dumped your bank for a few items, today we will go over how to climb your way back to success in this medieval point-and-click game from 2007. If this video is helpful, remember to subscribe with notifications on, and to join our Discord with the link in the description to interact with our amazing community. For this video, we are aiming for at least 21 likes, so I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, thank you. Instead of disclaimers, I'll quickly tell you how this video is going to work. As this topic has been heavily discussed, you can potentially guess how it's gonna go. Dump your bank for either a T-Bow, Dragon Hunter Lance or Crossbow, and kill Zulra or some dragons to get your items back. And while that's partially how this video will go, I'm also going to give you a small roadmap of items you can buy in order to make the rebuild more efficient, which I haven't seen in many of these videos, or none at all. So scapers, let's get ready to earn our way back to our prestigious items and dive right in. In this first part of the video, I will quickly talk about how to rebuild from scratch in case you were hacked and want to get your items back slowly but surely. I say quick because I've made an entire video of me taking on the challenge of seeing how much money I can make in 10 hours from absolute scratch, so I will link that video in the description in case you also want to hear about all of those methods in greater detail. The quote unquote good news about being hacked is that although you lost your items, you still have your skills, quests, and achievement diaries. If you find yourself in a situation where your bank value is zero, look no further than the Corrupted Gauntlet to start the rebuild. If you're good enough at the game, this place offers a great profit per hour for quite literally zero gear requirements. And you can even walk away with some crystal seeds, which will speed up your gains quite dramatically. When you feel like you have enough money, for example a few million GP, you can then buy cheap seeds that will yield moderately expensive herbs. I recommend Avento, Quorm, and Cadentine as their prices is in the triple digits, and just a single herb can cost more than 1k GP each. If you have some extra cash, I suggest buying Raynor or Snapdragon Seeds for your disease-free patches in Trollheim and Vice, as well as his hideous, as even the minimum 6 herbs will cover the cost of the seed. Along with it, I always recommend pairing your farm runs with some burnhouse runs, which can yield a great profit for a single minute of your time. Bird nests are very profitable, and even with lower tier houses you will be able to increase your gains by quite a bit. Now, imagine the hacker was a good guy and only took your tradable items. So, if you have things like your void armor, and after doing a few hours of corrupted gauntlet, another option is that you can get yourself a trident with a few charges, and hit up the Barrow's brothers. With a few lucky items you can build your way back to a blowpipe, and with some mid-tier darts you can then even attempt to do Zulra for a more consistent moneymaker, even if it's going to take slightly longer to kill. Now, I know this is easier said than done, but you can obviously do this for as long as you need in order to get back some of your PVM items, to then make your boss kills more efficient to speed up the process. So, these are just a few ideas you can put to the test if the worst case scenario happens, and when you have the standard items like mid-tier melee gear, Aram robes, and blessed dragonhide, you can look to join a few raids for some lottery items that will make the rebuild lightning quick. Before we end this segment, you can avoid getting hacked with today's video sponsor... Ah, just kidding, don't skip ahead. I see you already hovering over the play bar looking for when the segment ends. Don't worry, no sponsor today, but I will however plug one of my older videos about account security, also in the description. I'm sure you will find something useful and probably something you didn't know before. So now, onto the important part of the video. So, when you plan on selling your bank for an item or a few items, I would personally follow one big rule in order to make it slightly more efficient. Try to stay away from items that need charges in order to keep functioning at max efficiency. The only exception to this rule is if you are going to use said item at a place which can upkeep those charges at least with common drops. For example, dumping your bank for a scythe to do TOB doesn't sound like a terrible idea at first, but you need other expensive items to bring it up to its full potential. And if you don't get lucky with the drops, you may break even or even lose money. This can also be the case for a scythe dump to farm drops and pets for Chambers, Nightmare, Cerberus, Calphate Queen, just to mention a few. But knowing my luck, the rebuild would be incredibly slow. That being said, let's look at four other options if you decide to dump your bank for some gear upgrades. As I said before, most of the bank rebuild videos you see today on YouTube will have the same three items, which I will also talk about in a little bit. But a new one we can look at is Tumic and Shadow. At the time of making this video, this item is still sitting at 1.7 billion GP, and the quote-unquote bad part about it is that you kinda need ancestral and max mage gear in order for it to slap some cheeks. Obviously, Arim is your next best bet, which will help with accuracy, but the damage percentage is so disgusting that you're gonna wanna dump your bank for this as well. 
make sure you have extra money for Ancestral to make it even better. I made a whole video on this incredibly powerful item and the many bosses you can farm with not as many supplies used in order to get lucky at some drops or even some consistent money makers. The number one option you should look at for your rebuild is obviously the Tombs of a Mascot itself. With a few purples and some luck, your rebuild can potentially be over rather quickly and the general drops will be more than enough to keep up the charges. I wanted to make an extra segment for this item as it can potentially carry you through most of the raid, while your other items don't really need to be that powerful. With standard melee gear and the Zamorak in Hasta, along with maybe some blessed dragon hide and a blowpipe, paired with a Tumican Shadow will be more than enough to participate in some high-level raids until you make enough money for more powerful items. With the staff you can efficiently kill Zabak, Akka, and of course phases 2 and 3 of the final boss. I have seen some people running the staff along with Ancestral alone, ditching the Twisted Bow because of how powerful it is. So if you can only yoink a single big ticket item, this is going to be great for some Tombs of a Mascot runs. My favorite bosses to slay while I had this item were Bandos, Krill and Zeliana in the God Wars dungeon, as you can kill them without much trouble if you freeze them while the shadow goes to work. Another great option, although not exactly the best for money making and the rebuilding, would be the Giant Mole. But like I said, you can check out that video to look at some other options if you decide to get this valuable item. Alright, we started with a 1.7 billion GP item, and now we are going to bump that down to a humble 1.2 billion GP. Again, as of the time of making this video. It is incredibly common for players to dump their bank for a Twisted Bow, because with the right monsters you can make so much money with little to no gear. The cool part about it is that it is so strong at some places, that you can even wear a Void and it is still going to completely destroy many bosses, unlike the Tumican Shadow, where it's kinda recommended to also have full Ancestral. If you have literally zero GP after your purchase, first I'll tell you what to upgrade, and then we will look at some bosses to keep making a disgusting amount of money. So imagine you have the Twisted Bow and Full Void along with Dragon Arrows with your Avas Accumulator or Assembler. Some cheap items to go for first would be an Amulet of Glory and Snakeskin Boots. You should then upgrade to Blessed Dragonhide because some sets can be really cheap and you can make that money back in literally no time. If you don't yet have the Rigor Prayer unlocked, that's going to be your first upgrade, as the benefit you get from it will be far superior from the item coming up. At the time of making this video, it is 34 million GP, but see it as an investment and get it as soon as possible. The next best item we're looking for is the Necklace of Anguish. With it being the only neck item slot in the game with ranged strength, this will increase your DPS significantly. With a Twisted Bow and Dragon Arrows, Rigor and the Necklace of Anguish, that's where most of your DPS is going to come from. After Blessed the Dragonhide, we're looking for some Armadil Armor, or even Carols if you don't want to spend that much, and when you make even more cash, Masori Armor is going to bark at the end of your rebuild for range. The Twisted Bow is amazing at farming bosses and even some lesser monsters with high magic attack. I will talk about my favorite ones, but keep in mind that they're not the only options. If you're looking for something to AFK for the rebuild, Brutal Black Dragons is the place to go. All you need are some extended anti-fire, ranging potions and prayer potions, and sit there with auto-retaliate on, and then click to collect your loot. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that I will not include GP per hour because this will heavily depend on your levels and how much attention you are paying to the game. A great boss to camp that you can also do with Void is Zulra. Twisted Bow only is my favorite method, and it honestly goes by rather fast with good RNG. With the consistent drops you will be making around 100k per kill, or even more, but it's not gonna be as chill as the previous method. With higher requirements though, camping the Alchemical Hydra will be amazing once you have the method memorized. I love this place because of the chance at the claw and arguably one of the best pets in the game. And I have so much fun with it that it will go rather quickly. I personally bring my Bone Crusher necklace to have more inventory space for drops, but during a rebuild you obviously want to keep every bit of GP you get. Zilliana is a great boss to camp if you're feeling lucky, because with her common drops you will barely cover for your supplies. You can just run around the room while attacking her, and wait to see a Ceridomen Hilt or a Narmado crossbow on the ground. Like I said, I'm not a fan of lottery items from bosses, and I would much rather do something for consistent GP, but this boss is great to practice movement as well. The final method for the Twisted Bow is also the Tombs of a Mascot, and like the Tumican Shadow, this item will be able to carry you through Zebak and phases 2 and 3 of the final fight. It may not be as useful as the staff here, but pair it with a Zami Hasta and a Trident with not so expensive armor, and with a few lucky purples, your rebuild will be over pretty quickly. Alright, so that's it about the two most expensive items on the list, and now we're gonna look at two more affordable options for you to farm monsters for consistent loot. The first one being a Dragon Hunter Lance. This time, I will talk about the two sets I recommend for places to grind for money, and then the upgrade progression you should follow. If you dumped your bank for this item, go to the Skeletal Wyverns to make some starting GP. 
With some prayer potions and food, you will be able to make some decent cash for some quick upgrades. I will assume you have a fighter torso and at least a Nezi helm and dragon boots, and then you want obsidian legs for the strength in the leg slot. Follow that up with a cheap pair of ferocious gloves if you meet the requirements, and then an amulet of torture. You can get the last two at wyverns, or you may move to the next method to get them quicker. Even without justicia armor, rune dragons are great for high level money making, and one that doesn't need that much attention. If you come here, remember to buy a Dragonfire Shield, which is not that expensive nowadays, just in case you forget to drink your Dragonfire Protection. And once you have the items we talked about, if you plan on staying here for longer, Justicia is going to be your next upgrade. I would personally stay here until I was able to afford Bandos for our next method. Now, you cannot have a Dragon Hunter Lance and all of the gear we've talked about, and not go for one of the best and most consistent moneymakers in the game, Vorkath the Money Dragon. I've made an in-depth guide on it if you want to check it out. Anyway, once you're comfortable with farming Vorkath with melee, for which you want a salve amulet instead of a torture, you can then rebuild your way back to a Nezi face guard and a pair of primordial boots. With near maxed melee gear, this part of the rebuild is almost over. Of course, not counting Torva armor, which goes for a whopping 1 billion GP as of the time of making this video. Other places to use the Dragon Hunter Lance would be the King Black Dragon, although the loot is not really going to be amazing, and honestly, it's a little annoying to farm. But the pet is way too nice to pass up on the opportunity to make some money here. Once you made a bit more cash, the Dragon Hunter Lance will be a key item in the chambers of Zarek, as Olm's melee hand, along with many monsters inside, will die rather quickly if you use this cool looking weapon. Like I said previously, I don't really recommend the RNG money makers, but you never know when you will get lucky. The final item of this rebuild list is a Dragon Hunter crossbow, and we will be killing pretty much the same monsters. The best part about this item is that as long as you have Elite Void Armor and Dragon Fire Protection, if you kill Vorkath with Ruby and Diamond Dragon Bolts, you need a lot less gear to farm the boss efficiently. So, we will start here in order to make a ton of starting cash. If you want to slowly but surely save up for a Twisted Bow, you can go to Brutal Black Dragons with this item instead. With your Void and the Diamond Dragon Bolts as well as Bastion Potion and Rigor, you can easily hit constant 60s against these, which can definitely dispose of them in just a few hits. Since Hydras are weak to Dragon weapons, you may also take your DHCB to this area to farm the Alchemical Hydra, which will be quicker and easier than doing it with a Lance, which is why I didn't include that boss in that segment. Almost the same rebuild process as a Twisted Bow in terms of Rigor and a Necklace of Anguish, and pair that up with a Twisted Buckler for the range strength in the shield slot. Finally, you can also try some KBD and the Chambers of Zarek, although slightly better overall gear will be needed. And because of the consistent drops won't be amazing if you're trying to rebuild from scratch. If you still decide to do so, the DHCB is slightly better at KBD than the Lance. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and of course making it this far. I wish you the best of luck with the rebuild if you find yourself in this situation. A massive thank you to all my channel members for all of your continued support, which goes towards helping a starving Mexican feed his family. If you want to be a part of this list with a ton of cool benefits in the channel, click the join button below to see all of the great perks you can get. In the next one, we will go over some of the most amazing Runelite plugins for your OSRS adventure, regardless of the progression of your account. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba-ba-ba-ba, a peace.